Please welcome back to the show, Billy Porter. Oh my God! Isn't that, thank you, everybody, for showing the love. I'm so, I'm so that guy. The I last am. time I was here, you didn't have an audience, and I sang to a flower. Oh, we know. <laughs> and we're gonna get into that in a little bit. Um, I have a lot of questions for you because you've been raw, vulnerable, real, honest in your life, which I have too, but. In this book, you really peel back those layers. You know, when we are in the public eye, when we are, you know, people who choose hope, people who choose optimism, it's a choice. It's a practice. It's a daily practice. And simultaneously, other things can be going on on the inside. For me, there was a lot of trauma and grief that was unprocessed in my life for a very long time. And, um, you know, recently, within the last five, 10 years, I've been working through healing that trauma. And, and a part of that is this book. It's called Unprotected. And the subtitle for me, which is not necessarily, it's not on the book, printed on the book, but the subtitle is Healing Trauma Through My Art. Healing My Trauma Through My Art. Um, that's what it's about. That is the gift for me of being an artist, is that I've had a place to um, put my trauma. You know, I have to, I'm, I'm still processing all of this trauma and all of this grief to get to real joy, right? It's, yep. I think it is through inventory yeah. also that yeah. we realize, oh, you know, I, 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 it can be something as simple for me when I did inventory. I was like, I have no more baggage with my mom. I'm right. totally free of it. Right. I've been carrying it my whole life. And until I took that inventory and I really asked myself, how do I feel about this now in my 40s as a mother now myself? Am I a woman? I don't know. I grew up as you know, a showbiz kid right. where you're making, paying the rent and right. working in diapers, right. you know, it, it's confusing. You're right. not a kid. You're not. And I was like, I am actually healed of this thing and I can approach this as an adult. And I'm curious as to, but then there were other traumas I realized I hadn't dealt with. A lot of my coping mechanisms were still yeah. very childish. Yeah. Um, what trauma, you know, are, did you go into the book wanting to heal, what writing the book trauma came up and did you realize I have not dealt with that? Well, the index trauma, which is, you know, the trauma of sexual abuse, you know, at the hands of my stepfather from the time I was seven to the time I was 12, has been a really, truly everyday defining thing in my life. And it affects everything. And what the book has been able to do is I've been able to um, put it down on paper and put it in its place, in its category. You know, um, the world stopped during COVID so I could heal myself. You know, I went into trauma therapy. There are exercises. The, the, the you know, the psychiatric world is the work and the things that they have developed over the years and the skills they have developed over the years are remarkable. You know, it's very expensive. A lot of people don't have the resources to afford it. I'm just saying the truth. Yep. You know, I'm blessed to have been able to afford that so that I could understand how to really once again, I just keep saying it, heal. And when you work through things, new things come up. Yep. You don't get to say, great, I'm done. You're never done. Healed. I think that's the thing. And I think that's the, th the message also that we have to make clear 
is that life is a journey. It's not a destination, right? We can continue to learn and continue to grow until our last breath. Yes. That is what I'm interested in. I, that's what I'm interested in. And can it be the journey of once I work through this, it's not great. More stuff comes in. It never ends. It's I'm checking spiritual boxes to realize I'm no longer that child living in that trauma. I am an adult away from it looking in a rearview mirror, ready to heal and move and on. And tell a different story. To the, yes. Change I'm the ready narrative. to tell a different story now, y'all. The book is out. I told it all. I told it all, child. I put it all out there. Okay, so right? when I was 13 and got outed <laughs> for being institutionalized, what gave you, I, that was a choice made for me. And I mm -hmm. said, you know what? Oh, wow. Not how I would have handled it, <laughs> but this is my truth. So I'm going to use it as my weapon and my tool and my arsenal to be relieved that I no longer have to pretend to be perfect, right. especially in a Hollywood situation right. where there's a lot of veneers. Yes. How did you find your bravery to come out and talk about HIV, which changed the world? You, you literally changed the world when you did that hmm. because you brought light into a space of darkness, secrecy, and illuminated a path for people to feel less alone. And I thank you so much for that because I feel like I walk this earth so that people can know, like, I'm with you. What I understood is that from the minute I could comprehend thought, from the minute that my beautiful, lovely, very caring family, who I love dearly, sent me to a psychologist when I was five because I was a sissy. So the messaging that I got was, something is wrong with you and you need to be ashamed of yourself and fixed. So shame is the only thing I knew. Then I was gay. So gay connected to my church bubble. You're an abomination. Social, uh, you know, governmental sanctioned homophobia. You're wrong. You need to be fixed. Coming out at the age of 16 in 1985 in the middle of the AIDS crisis, trauma. Something's wrong with you. You need to be fixed. Then in 2007, getting the very thing that everybody from my church pulpit said was God's punishment, right? I got it. Shame, 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 shame. It's the only thing I ever knew. And I finally said, shame is a silencer. Shame is a murderer. And I need to live because I have stuff to do. I have work to do. There's a calling on my life. There is a purpose for my life. There is a ministry in what I do. And I have to be sane to do it. So I'm going to do that. And that's why I did it. You know, to release the shame. And look, look at it now. You know, it's, it's, it's powerful. It's very, very powerful. And I did all of what I did. And that's the thing about reading this book and going back. Everything that I've been able to accomplish, I accomplished stuck in the quagmire and under the cloud of shame. Imagine what I'm getting ready to do now. Imagine. I have no idea. I have no idea. But I'm ready.